Thank you very much. And thank you very much to, to the organisers for allowing me to give this presentation. First of all, can I just check before I'm evicted? Uh, is it 10 minutes I'm allowed? It is. Oh, thank you. Um, well, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, uh, respond um, in a small way, at least, to the challenges that were set out in the previous talk. Um, first of all, oh, sorry, can I go back? Lovely. Um, first of all, I accept that um, Power Textile perhaps isn't a name yet that's on everyone's lips, and I'll explain who we are in just a minute. But first of all, let me uh, just tell you what, how we are responding to the energy challenge. First of all, um, we, we want to harvest solar energy. Now, we're based in Scotland. Um, some of you may be a little bit prejudiced in thinking that Scotland isn't noted for its um, sunshine. Um, it perhaps has less sunshine than other parts of the world, but it's very convenient for me today that the sun is shining. Um, Scotland does indeed have quite a lot of sun, um, and certainly it is a real possibility um, for, for Scotland, I believe. We want to convert it to electrical energy, nothing particularly very novel in that, of course, uh, using photovoltaic devices. But where the novelty we feel comes into our approach is that it provides, our approach provides another outlet for the textile industry. And I think it's fair to say that the textile industry is not noted very much for its role in the energy sector. So who are we? Well, briefly, there's me. Uh, my co-director is Professor John Wilson, who's Professor of Materials Processing at Heritage Walsh University in Edinburgh. We have a commercial advisor in Robert Bruce, and we have a research student at Heriot Watt University working under John Wilson, um, Helen Lynn. I should stress that we're not a university spin-out company. We are an independent development company. And those are the total personnel of the company so far. So what have we set out to achieve? Well, our aim is to develop flexible textile fabrics into which photovoltaic cells have been directly incorporated. So to put it simply, we start off with that, which is a perfectly normal um, polyester woven fabric, and it'll end up looking something like that. Uh, and that's the point. We want to do it not just into high, more high performance fibers, but into get into commodity fabrics like polyester and nylon. So where have we got to? And the answer is that we hope to have a demonstrated product that we can uh, sensibly show through potential interested parties quite soon. How long is quite soon? <coughs> Next few months, I think. So our aim then is to develop a prototype solar cell that's fully integrated onto a textile fabric. And the next question, well, well, why? First of all, I think it responds to the growing need for sustainable energy, and I don't want to say any more about that because I think for this audience that will be, especially after the last speaker, that will be self-evident. Secondly, it brings more versatility to the use of solar cells, I'd suggest. And thirdly, it does provide another important outlet for the textile industry. And also, of course, we feel it's a good business opportunity. And in terms of energy source, we feel that the sun is a free source of energy. We hope it's an endless source of energy. Um, if it isn't, I, I guess um, we'd go home or anywhere. So um, it's cheap. OK, so I say it brings added versatility in the use of solar cells. <coughs> <coughs> we all know, I think, that the production and installation of solar cells are increasing. But existing solar, or existing solar panels, um, sorry, that slide should say, are fragile because they're encased in glass plates, they're heavy, and they're rigid. Glass plates are mostly flat. And therefore, of course, from that point of view, lighter, more flexible solar panels will possess advantages. And currently, these flexible solar cells are based on plastic film, often from quite expensive polymer like polyimide. But of course, as we all know, and I can see 
plenty of examples of this right now. A lot of flexible materials, of course, are made from textile fabrics. Our curtains, our clothes, and our tapestries, and so forth. And indeed, some solar plastic films have been added to textile fabrics in the hope that uh, to make um, textiles uh, photovoltaic. But of course, this requires some kind of attachment process, such as sewing or laminating or welding. And as soon as that happens, um, textile people um, feel that the handle, the feel, isn't exactly right. The aesthetics are certainly not right. Um, I had some quite interesting comments from a member of the audience last week about this. Um, the break is not right, the conformability is compromised, and so on and so forth. So what we are aiming to do is to add solar cells then directly to textile fabric. And the approach that we're using is really very similar to the approach that is used for um, conventional um, solar cells. I won't go into great detail about this, but you can see there are three layers of nanocrystalline silicon there, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, illumination comes in from the top through a transparent conducting oxide, um, and on the bottom is the textile substrate, which of course we have to make conductive. I would draw your attention to the nanocrystalline silicon. Um, this was developed by my uh, colleague John Wilson in an earlier project. And the point about this is that these are crystalline, but they're small, very small crystals. And in particular, they can be laid down at temperatures as low as 200 degrees Celsius, which then means that um, laying them down onto nylon or polyester fabrics, for example, does become a distinct reality. OK, so that's our response. What are the commercial opportunities? And I think I have, what, about two or three minutes left to discuss those with you. Um, we've had a, a lot of interest from the world out there in what we're doing. Um, and I think once we can deliver, um, things will not look too bad. Um, though I say, though I'm, I'm certainly reminded of what Lord Haskell has said, that the economic situation future will not be rosy and we will have to work hard to justify ourselves. But the defence sector, I think, is one key area, and certainly we have been in talks with um, governmental and non-governmental organisations. And I've listed there some of the possibilities that we feel um, are, do, would represent commercial opportunities for our technologies. Tents, field hospitals, unattended sensors, um, en enabling extended missions for soldiers during situ charging, um, simplifying military logistic chains. Um, also, we had an interest in the thought of powering airships at high altitude. There's an awful lot of canvas on airships, of course. And also for helping to um, sustain uh, downed pilots, too. Um, we think there's a big opportunity for non-textile and possibly textile architectures a lot of buildings have extensive roof space. Why not let's use it um, and um, with materials that we know. Textiles are well-known materials. We know what they can do and can't do. Um, let's utilize that fact. Um, the, the, left, the, the picture on the left is Woolaroo Town Hall in South Australia. Um, the one on the right, which is a, a textile roof, is, is from Turkey for those who are interested. We think maybe that we could extend our solar cells to textile architectures as well. But awnings, tents, and so forth, they provide protection. How about they provide a bit of energy as well? So they can achieve added value with little impact on their primary function. I'm particularly interested in seeing this technology used for disaster humanitarian relief. Um, quick erection of tents and temporary hospitals, at least until perhaps um, uh, generators can be moved in. Um, I think the leisure market, again, tents, awnings, canopies, uh, canvas porches from caravans and so forth. And I'm sure there are lots of others, <coughs> quite honestly, that we haven't yet thought of. Um, I, I wonder if uh, we should be thinking about the health market, and I'd be very happy to talk about um, that with um, anybody who 